We're here. Hi, John. How are you doing? We're doing well. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start. What else is there to do? Let's start. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live land. This is the Clarion Live open webinar. Today is, what is it, Wednesday, the 26th of April, 2023. And with me today is the ever prompt, Andy mm -hmm. Wilson. Hello, Andy. Hello. And not with me today is Bruce Johnson, who may or may not make it um, by the time the webinar is over. So we shall see. Um, also, Mike Hansen is what? Goofing off in Italy? Is that what's going on? Last, last time I checked in, I saw him check in, he was in Venice. He'd gone to Rome and he was in Venice. Goofing off in Italy. I hear you can like walk across the canals now. You can just, there's no water. What? You can just wander some, across. On the, little, on the little side streets, yeah. I've seen some images and can't imagine what the smells like, actually. Imagine that being a bit <laughs> yeah. questionable. Well, let's all be grateful that we're not in Venice today. Um, anyway, this is Q and A day. Questions and answers. If you have a question, put it in the questions box. We'll do our best to answer. Uh, if there are no questions and answers, then we will leave, go home, <laughs> and go back to work. <laughs> we all have things to do. Yeah. So at the moment, there are no questions. Therefore, there are no answers. But I have an answer from last week. Um, we talked about SQLite last week, and we talked about primary keys on integers and how SQLite was supposed to automatically do that for you, whether you had auto increment on there or not, and I couldn't get it to work. And so <laughs> I had recommendations to set it to read only, and I tried that, and that didn't work. Set that in the, in the Clarion Dictionary to read only, that didn't work. Um, I tried turning auto increment on, that didn't work. What else did I try? I tried a bunch of things. There's an anyway. option to say is identity, something like that, is it? Yep, that didn't work either. I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I, I think I tried it. I tried pretty much everything I could think of. I'll share my screen quickly here to show you what did work. And it was a suggestion from last week. Cool. Yeah. So I feel like we need to start some kind of a, a help file on SQLite. There's lots of things um, to know. Screen two, here we go. Yes, this works. Setting the ID. Uh, yeah, you know, cause, um, cause was it Rich who mentioned that? I believe Set so, one? yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, because that's what um, we were thinking it was, that the client was filling it in with a value, like a zero or something. If you fill it in with a value, then SQLite won't do its thing in the background. So this does work. Uh, everything auto increments fine, and it's pretty cool, really. Something you don't have to worry about. The back end just takes care of it. Cool. Yeah. Even if you don't tell it to. I don't have auto increment turned on or anything. Is that what it was? Yeah, I think it's auto increment. But um, there you go. That solved the problem. And I was quite happy about it. And now uh, full text searches work. And it's quite quick. So there's a question from uh, Roberto about the Noyantis release. There's always it's a standing question. We might as well just. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, uh, for those who missed it on Monday, we, um, yeah, we, we we were quite happy to uh, start putting our up, upload the latest classes, latest templates, latest everything to our server, and then build the uh, installers. Um, but code drop release version twenty two point one just a couple of days beforehand. So obviously, I wanted to make sure we included that because it kind of makes sense. Pointless me doing a release without. Um, all went well until we got to two of the products, and they are, and I've lost my sheet of paper. Oh no, it's a uh, flow graph and syntax edit. And I know uh, Roberto is uh, he's waiting for the update for the syntax editor. But anyway, yes, basically there is an issue on what looks to be licensing. Still got to prove that. Basically, it's it's presenting itself where the syntax edit. If you open it. Uh, if you open a window, what's got it on, and it's there, and you use it, you close that window and go back in again, and it's not initializing a second time. 
which does make me leave me to believe it's uh, linked to licensing. Uh, so I start to rework that, but I've just not had a chance to continue it, to be honest with you, Roberto. Um, so I did some on Monday. I did a tiny bit yesterday, but uh, unfortunately, other things have uh, have got in the way. So it's to be continued. Um, but with that, once I've done reworked that and tested everything, of course, then the release will be done. So it literally is imminent, but um, I just need to see why it's not working. There is actually one interesting thing which came out of this, which I don't know if to mention or not, but what the hell, I'll mention it anyway. Um, so you get your code license and we compile the code license into your application and so on. And all of this I could prove with all the vid versions and version 20... 22.0 of code jock and yeah everything you could go in and out of screens as you would expect all the usual things so when i was stripping out how i apply the licensing and compile them in uh there's a couple of ways you can do it um i commented out the license completely and the thing carried on working but with no no that's not the those two in question the flow graph and the thing but i, I tried it with calendar and i tried it with command bars and um yeah, basically, I was going in and <laughs> in and out of procedures, uh, just using their products, but without any licensing at all. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think that's some some kind of bug in their system. Um, but 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 yes, that was, I did find that very interesting. <laughs> yes. Hmm. So I'm going to do a little more digging in that because I don't want to break any rules for obvious reasons. Um, but um, but yeah, we've always compiled the licensing as part of the create com uh, create command on the um, um, uh, on the, the the creation of the OCX uh, control uh, container. Uh, but there are there is a different way you can do it with CodeJock at least. Anyway, you you can do it um, via a, what you call a global settings um, module. So we were playing about with that. I'm still going to go back and revisit it to make sure that we do tick the box and, and, and apply them. But it was just interesting in my tests uh, that they were still there. they were still working and working several times over in and out and testing. You know, I must have done the command bars while well, I run a full application uh, in and out 15, 20 times on different screens, different command bars, and it just carried on working, even though there was a million percent there was no license compiled into the system. And the controls weren't registered on my system, so it wasn't like, it wasn't as though it was picking up the .lic file in the same location as the OCX, because they weren't registered. So technically, it shouldn't know about that. But the, the final test is going to be, let's just move the LIC, the license files, away from the CodeJock installation and see if they still continue to work. Now, that that would be very worrying if that is the case. Um, good for you guys, <laughs> but um, but worrying for them. But anyway, that's, that's where we are up to. All right. I don't see any other questions. This is going to be a short webinar. I believe. Yes. Um, I've been working on uh, the classify it some more. And I was talking to Mary yesterday and he I put a lot of work into it. And we're thinking um, th that we might raise the price, Andy. Right now it's but it's all, currently, you can raise it to whatever you've always got on special. It's, 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 cool. it's currently available for $25 for a limited <laughs> time at www. Um, Photosoft.com. Where, where where is that place? Yes. I, I had to remind you of your your. Product. I know, I know. It's been it's been a while. Um, anyway, we're we're discussing raising the price to twenty eight dollars. So if you want to save some money, now's the time to grab it. I guess before the next release. So there you go. People should jump on that. Um. <laughs> That's true. I mean. Three dollars. What, what will three dollars get you nowadays? I it wouldn't get you money. a Starbucks or a Costa Coffee in the UK. Mm, no, no. It'd be about, that'd be about with the exchange rate about four four twenty. <laughs> there's, a, there's a question for me. Mark is asking me, how did you arrive at working with SQLite? That's a good question. Um, Because it's SQL, 
because it's SQL and it's a light version of it. It a lot of it is because it's SQL because I can um, and I have adapted Ultimate SQL to work with it, so I can do SQL statements and that's what I'm used to doing now. I'm not so much used to working with top speed and those kinds of files. I like the speed of SQL and SQL Lite gives you a lot of the same uh, features that you get with MS SQL or any any other version. Um, with the exception that it's single use user only, it's not made to be shared amongst a lot of people. So it's, it's specific cases, but the things that I'm doing classify it is for one person to use. Um, updated is for one person to use. So it works really well with that. Uh, We're actually going to switch one of our products to SQLite from SQL Express. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'll give a use case for that, Mark. If you really open Mark's. Uh, mic, microphone as well. So yeah. it's open, open webinar. Um, which one? Which Mark was it? As, as Bruce would say, Mark from uh, Greenacre. I'm not doing the accent. <laughs> um, but it yeah, is the, Mark from Greenacre. It is. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. The 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 justification for us changing is uh, it's our betting system. And predominantly, uh, they are bookmakers on the betting ring around the around the race course, uh, horses, dogs, that kind of thing. And they are really single user entities. Now, some of the pictures could be networked, and that's why we went single uh, SQL Express. Uh, and you could turn on the networking, and, and it's multi user. But there's a whole logistics nightmare about a lot of the courses won't have Wi Fi, and then you're trying to run a network over a, a mobile, a cellular dongle, which <laughs> you can imagine how good that is for connectivity and so on. So it's going to be easier to take it to single user because they are ultimately each pitch is their own entity. It's just that they can take the odds uh, that they're offering the punters um, and set them accordingly and, and that kind of thing. So they, we're going to switch it to more single user. But each, but one of them will act as the primary user, and that will just be an API server which can take and uh, push uh, any uh, odds changes, that kind of thing, the smaller data um, around just via API calls. And it doesn't matter if one of the other bookies then uh, we call them yeah, bookies, bookmakers. Uh, it doesn't matter if one of them drop off; um, they can just carry on working and then just play catch up via the API server when they're you know. They've got the service back again, um, so everyone's actually independent, uh, and so on. So, in a, in our use case, um, the SQL Express was a bit of an overkill because uh, it served us well, uh, and we've got a setup builder installed and all SQL automated, and we've done webinars on that. But we just don't, not, we're not going to need it. So we still need all the triggers, and we've covered that with SQL Express. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, SQLite. Yeah. Uh, it does use some auto auto numbering, but of course there'll be GUIDs because if we're going to an API server, they'll be passing the data around via GUIDs. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to actually move just for that one that, that application. We're moving it from SQL Express to uh, Microsoft SQL that is to SQLite because then we don't have to worry about services being running because uh, that's. If we have support calls, um, then it, it is because some kind of update's gone in the background, a SQL service stopped running, the service, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so we can just take that headache away. So there's a use case scenario where we've gone the opposite way. Yeah, I've got a I've got a system out in the field that there's the home office, and um, we've got two remote, uh, two of their eight remote locations um, we're running against SQL at the home office and we actually build the app uh, using TPS for the remotes just because the maintaining TPS files is easier as opposed to going to SQL Express um, and so wondering what if there were what's the what's the evaluation thinking about SQL Lite as opposed to TPS or better stability and whatever. Um, the, the, the the bookmaking system years ago, long time ago, like Clavier in four days, <laughs> uh, started out as TPS, as you can imagine. Um, and just like any of our systems, we had to you know make sure we ship TPS fix um, and, uh, and things like that. And we also had to 
before you had in memory data drive, but we had to basically like, work on queues just to get the speed because these books yeah. do have to calculate really fast. The, the bookmaker, funnily enough, they never like to uh, they never like to lose money. Um, so take it, change, changing odds on one runner changes your overround win, your OR win for the rest of the book. So basically, you can see straight away if you're going to make money out of a race, just as uh, as the, 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 the you know you're changing the odds and the money and the bets come in. Um, so it has a lot of a lot of calculations going. And currently, we've got all those calculations in SQL triggers. We did have them in in memory and, and TPS. You couldn't get the speed out of TPS to do that. Yeah. Uh, for reading, you um, it, it it just didn't uh, it weren't ca- well, I can't say weren't capable of it. Of course, it was capable of it. Were the developer, but compared to doing it in SQL, where it's a select sum for this where clause, and I've got my answer, and I can apply it immediately, all in one SQL statement. You know, it's it's so much faster, so much easier. Um, so that's as soon as we could go to SQL with that, we did. Um, and I just give the justification for going to SQL Lite, and that's purely from um, an install point of view. And now we've got the 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 uh, ability that they are all single entities, uh, and we'll just have a little API server doing our networking for us. Best of both worlds, in my mind. Nice. Yeah, my my remote locations are essentially order entry, um, order header and details, and mm-hmm. they're they're doing their daily work, and then we have a a push to the home office nightly. So I don't I don't have any speed issues. I do have I I do have one location that is multi-user um currently. And so the multi-user part would be a complication for SQLite for me. Yeah, I wouldn't so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But during the, this transition, where we were, we decided we we're still trying to uh, allow them to network the pictures, uh, the the individual betting pictures. Then, uh, then yeah, we the SQL Lite was a non-starter for us, unfortunately. Um, but now, you know, if it's if single case, you you know, in particular uh, user case scenarios, um, uh, it's just choosing the right tool for the uh, scenario and. In this one, and I think some of your home office ones, you know, I think the SQL like it's not just a you might not have the speed requirement, but I think John touched on it a minute ago. It's just easier to work with SQL commands. It um, is. It, 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 well, I'm going to say you'll know yourself. It, it just is, and uh, and that's all us just thinking about writing records and reading records and so on. But if you want to do any data analysis, then you that's where the speed will really come into its own and the ease of you know. Give me an average of this across these, and it'll just give you the the data back into a queue, and you've just got to put that queue straight to a chart, and you just give them a you know a nice dashboard widget with next to no work on it. Well, the back end does the does the work so, exactly. Right? Yeah, you but just have to ask you, it the right you, question. Exactly. You the back end with SQL Lite. <laughs> right. Mm. All right. Well, thanks, John. I I was just curious as to the, sort of the wider context and. I have been watching the uh, Clarion example um, redo on the Friday webinars, so t- took note of that. Yeah, it was nice. Soft Velocity gave us the driver for it, which was kind of cool. And it is what the most used uh, database in in the world, <laughs> pretty much. It's on all the all everybody's phones, and it just has wide usage. And um, yeah, we did the example just to people in the outside world. If they look at TPS, they don't know what it is, but if they look at SQLite, they do know what it is. So that's that's another reason. Well, and I, I have I have noticed that um, like SVN version control is SQLite underneath, hmm. um, and I've had occasions where my my version control client gets into a state where it says, "Hey, you got to clean up your can't do any." can't do any pulls because you got to clean up something's in progress didn't finish right and so from time to time i have to go in and do the use a hammer and clear out the things that are in the way and then i can go back and do the pull again so uh, i've done some done some sqlite queries surprisingly there you go cool yeah well ultimate sql handles sqlite Pretty well. It, it, you can do memory tables or as well with uh, SQLite and full text search, which is what <laughs> I was showing that last week. 
Yes, you were. Because I was. Yeah, I'm very excited about it with the um, classify it. It's coming. It's coming. Um, it's just a lot of things. I have a lot of things to do. Um, Steve is asking, does an app run faster on SQLite? Um, the app's going to run at its own speed. It's, I imagine you're asking whether you can get data faster. Right? I guess, Andy. Um, and probably, say, I guess, it compared to TPS, on, yeah. Depends on the yeah. query. It depends, it depends on, on what the query. data depends is. Depends where you're looking for. Yeah. If you're inserting a record, I don't think, I wouldn't even know which would be faster, to be honest with you. Um, well, it's really I fast doing that, too, if you log out. If you do a log out commit on a batch of, a batch of inserts, it's really fast. It's really, really fast. Um, I think the, the, the thing you've got to think is, and it's not SQL like this is just SQL versus flat ISOM. So SQL versus TPS. If you're querying, so you're wanting data, then it's results based rather than record based. TPS yeah. is one record at a time. Your view might think about, you know, what it's got to go and get, but you're going to be reading them one at a time. You think of SQL, and SQL might be one of the, the engines, one of the variants. It's results based. So you, passing it all to the engine saying, here's a query, here's whatever, I just want that set of answers. And hey, presto, you've got it. And it's going to um, it's going to provide it faster than TPS, I'm, in my opinion. Yeah, I keep, I keep mentioning Ultimate SQL because it's, there's a, if, if you're not using something like Ultimate SQL, then you have to learn some things about dummy files and using prop SQL and that sort of a thing. If you use something like ultimate SQL then, or ultimate SQL, then you don't have to do those things. You just set it up in a global template and then off you go. And I think um, Clarion has some, some classes at least that handle SQL, but I haven't looked at those to see how well they work. No, but they exist. No. They are, they are, there are some SQL things in Clarion itself <laughs> in the box, out of the box. Yeah, I should, I should look at it, see what they do. We came up with our own, oh, Clarion 5.5, maybe Clarion 5.0. Um, and we kind of just built upon them. Um, it served us well <laughs> for a long time. So I yeah, yeah. didn't even know Clarion had them. So we should really, we should really take a look, see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I was I thought about that myself. See what what, that, what is in the bot, I guess. Oh, so that's, a, that's yeah. a webinar topic there. Could be, could be. <laughs> Okay. okay, Kevin asked, um, did I mention the calendar status? I, I don't know, did you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically, uh, Roberto asked about the, the, the overall release, and it should have been Monday, but I, I, I have to watch back. But basically, we found an issue with, we think it's relating to licensing in the latest code jock 22.1 um, so I'm just reworking and doing some investigation and I'm just reworking so it, it is imminent uh, Kevin uh, all the calendar changes we wanted are done tested tried faster uh, not that they, you're coming for a really old version but um, and so on but so Monday on Monday's webinar now Monday's a public holiday here in the UK in fact it's ridiculous for me but next Monday is a public holiday. The Monday after is a public holiday. Monday after isn't. The Monday after is. So, uh, but we're still going to do it. I was going to so, say, you're contractually obligated for at least two per month. So that's <laughs> that's going to be a tough month for you. you so we're still going one, to do it. It's uh, breach of contract, Andy. I might, be, uh, I might not be at the office. I might be sat at home. Um, but uh, but yes, I will. We'll do it. So, Kevin, um, we can also make sure you've got that beta. If if it's not formally released, uh, and there's every chance it might not be formally released, we'll make sure you've got a beta, and we'll switch your code from your old version four odd, which is a little old now, to be fair, to um, to the new um, new version, and then we'll uh, we'll make sure your embed points are done accordingly. Uh, Kevin uh, is asking about the beta. Yeah, but no point in letting me... Let me uh, it's in pieces on the licenses at the moment. So, Kevin, I'm not going to send it out at the moment. Um, we're doing 
I'll, uh, I don't know how you guys work in, 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 in teams, but uh, yeah, basically Oliver was pushing and pulling changes uh, via GitHub, uh, via the repos earlier. And I had to hold off sending in my changes because I've got loads of stop messages everywhere. So you wouldn't want the version I've got at the moment. <laughs> But yeah, I gave you a gift on Monday, Andy, and that that's we're all waiting for that. Yes, I'm going in. That keeps on giving. <laughs> oh. I've got a, a query for everybody, actually, just to think, hang on, we've got Mark, a question mark, a question mark, a question from Mark. Um, Andy, uh, could you uh, give an example, uh, show and tell, of how to add a 32-character GUID field uh, to a dictionary field and the code to generate it uh, using NYS tools. Um, yes, should um, do that now. Do it now, Andy. Do it now. Do it now. So I'll, I'll tell you what I will do. I won't because we've already got it. Our application already does that. 32 character, 36 character GUI, do you mean? But I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 Let's uh, open the mic. Mark, Mark, Mark. Can't see him. Yeah, got him. Hey guys. Yeah, yeah. Thirty six. Sorry, uh, thirty six character. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna. This is a multi DLL app. There is a slightly different way that you could have done this, but. Um, to do with a global class and a type structure, um, but but let's not do that. Um, okay, let me open that and share my screen. Share to. Okay, so to the dictionary, I suppose. Okay, so as I say, you could have had a... Uh, you could have pulled it from a, a class and so on. Um, this is an easier method. It's slightly different implementation, but it's an easier method. Okay, so in my pool, I've got uh, just a GUID. Okay, and on that, that GUID, it's a C string 37, which ultimately is a string 36. Um, but the main thing we have on here is we are saying basically exclamation, DCT, get GUID. So basically it's a procedure and it's in my data app. It's related to the dictionary, so I call it DCT. Okay, an exclamation means basically it's a, it's a function you call it. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a procedure which returns a value. So that's its initial value. And I've just got that in my pool, which means various of my tables, and we'll jump down to... Um, states. Trying to think of something that we can show they are states. Uh, all the tables have got them. So um, we will have yeah, so they're, they're, they're off there. Um, trying to think where my GUI is. State ID and it is built upon the typical, it's not built off the pool. Could argue why it's not built off the pool. It's probably told a bad example. But it's essentially the same. There we go. It's, it's initial value. So you're going to want that in your GUID in the dictionary. Um, sorry, one second. There's a, a brew round going on. I'll have a tea, please. <laughs> Never miss a drink in the office. Everyone knows that. <laughs> uh, so, yes, yeah, so basically, it's going to call that same, that, that same um, initial value So when, that, when it gets a new record. So that's a dictionary thing. And you can put it into a pool uh, and then feed from them. So that's got the pool on it. So why the... I didn't that. Okay, question mark on that. I think that's a, a bug. So I have that in your dictionary. Now if I go to my apps, it should be open. And I should have in here, oh, there it is, DCT get GUID. Uh, you don't, don't pass it any parameters and you do return a string from it. Now, this is a, you know, say the Niantis tools, and I know you've got U tools. So uh, it's a source procedure, or it should be. Yeah, it's a source procedure. 
you should have the extension on their uh, utilities, which will create your class. Um, yeah, NYF, I think it's just called NYS Utils, but that will give you a local class. Yeah, NYS Utils. With it being a source, it will ask where you want to the init and kill, so you can keep your code in between. So they're good defaults. For source procedures, Mark, I normally put my code at 5,000. I'll be honest with you, so you can see here, get a yeah. GUID and return. Um, so all you, <laughs> all you want is, I've just got a, a local variable, LV GUID, which is uh, there, and it calls the utils dot get GUID. That will get you the uh, GUID. It does a, an API call, Windows API call, uh, generates you a GUID, and basically, you just got to return it. That's really it. Mm -hmm. The only reason we, we could have implemented it a slightly different way by having uh, the get GUID at the Niantis utils global level. And technically, I think it is at the global level uh, from a design point of view. And we could have created um, in, in in the global. Um, yeah, actually, no, no, what you, you, you will still want to be able to do that because Niantis globals uh, does go through um, uh, and initialize when the system, the application starts up and so on. So anyway, so basically you've just got a lot of waffle, you've got a, a local procedure. You don't pass mm -hmm. any parameters, it returns you a GUID, returns you a string. And it does that by having the extension NYS utils, the anti utils on there, and on the exam, you know, and it literally just calls get GUID. Primes that up, that's going to give you your 36 character GUID, readable GUID, um, that is. And, and basically everything calls that. And it's part cool. of... Um, Yes, it's declared globally, so everything, uh, all your apps are aware of it. Uh, you make sure it's in all your apps if it's multi-DLL. I don't think yours is. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, all of your tables with, where you've got that as your initial value, then basically when you press insert, that will um, that will automatically pr be primed. Ah, cool. Okay. So there's no real code to move the value. It's just when I insert the record, it's, it'll go there. Yeah, it's um, it's one I prepared earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. So just let me. Oh, let me get SQL Expert uh, Management Studio loading. Won't be a second. Sorry. We said um, states, didn't we? Just waiting for Management Studio. Won't be a sec. Sure, to uh, management studio is. Uh, oh, ignore that. This is a yeah. It's on a finger build. Uh, ignore that. Right, locations, and um, I've, I've got our G visuals changing the words. So states are counties, but they are the same. Right, where the hell is management studio? DB, yeah. Okay, so I was to um, take a sneak peek in here. Um, use that's just force of habit. Select uh, star from states, and we'll just order by. Do it by the book, actually. Order by, and then we do on our system, we do have a record ID. We might want to mention that on yours. Descending, right? There we go. So I've got 160. We don't need all of them. We'll just do the top 10. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And we can see it's a city of London, Greater London. So if I was to go and say, I'm going to add a new one, we're about to add, we have a quick look in here. And that's your record primed up for you. Nice. Okay. So from an RI point of view, we do have the auto number field. It's called record ID in a, by, by design purposely because um, let's go to the app. And this is this will be probably controversial uh, for some people and so on. But I still like the auto number. I like it because it puts me that record in there. So if I was 
wanting to work with any child records, I could do, and I can press cancel on my insert. Uh, so let's say you've got a, a form. Uh, what can I do? Let's go to um, let's go to that one. Oh, I've cancelled that, and obviously your record's gone as you would expect. Mm. Right. I go to our products here. So, okay, there's our record just primed up. That's the parent. So now, if I was to go and um, give it a sale option, I can now start putting a sale option in. I haven't got my product. I've not typed in a description, so on and so forth. But I could put a opt one in there. Option one. 180, whatever, kind of irrelevant. That's a child record belonging to this product. And I think if I have a quick look at select star from top 10. Come on, I do. I'm going to copy the line above uh, from Rod. I was going to, something about having all your field names the same, you know, uh, per table that is. Um, so we have a look at that. That's one just being just added now, and it belongs to. Let's just grab that ID. Uh, ending sixty-eight D. Okay, so I can see what product mm. it belongs to. It belongs mm. to that record. So you have your RI on your GUIs. You don't have your RI on your record ID. They are mm. literally just local. If you, if you had an API server and you had data bouncing from device to device, server, you know, machine to machine, and that kind of thing, uh, all, all, all separately, then the record IDs would mean nothing to you. So from an RI point of view, you don't want to be linking by the record ID. But I still mm. like the. I still like it because if I get rid of this now. There you go, I've got rid. Now let's go back. And the RI has automatically got rid of that record for me, that child. So I've got no orphans. I've got no orphan records. Um, we've definitely gone off target. We were not talking about a GUID. But anyway, that's that's um, well, what you would use there. That was an example. <clears throat> Great. That, that's a good, um, good example. And I can come back and, and take a look at that uh, to implement it. So thanks. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, perhaps that might be controversial. Um, Definitely linking. John, do you link on GUIDs in your system? Do I link on GUIDs? Uh, yeah, so yes. parent, child, that kind of thing. I do. Yeah, and that's good practice. So I would def obviously recommend that. Uh, the controversial bit is people just don't say don't have an auto number key. Uh, but I just like it from that point of view where I can go and put loads of child records in and then just realize, oh, no, we've already got this. I don't need it. Press cancel and the work's done for me to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, I can also give an update. I don't know. Um, I've got some um, update on Setup Builder for those that are using it. Um, Frederick has released uh, Setup Builder 2023. I don't know if, uh, if John or Andy, if you use that um, product. We use it. I've not uh, updated yeah. to that yet. I have not yeah. had a chance, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Bleeding Edge here. So I, I jumped right into it, um, and it was the beta one. And um, <clears throat> I did report some issues to Frederick um, for some things that uh, weren't, uh, weren't uh, working accordingly. So uh, uh, he repaired those in the latest release, and the new setup builder is is working great um, and i also use uh, capesoft's uh, safe update which has safe download so it does all the checking of uh, updates and uh, xml files and things like that so uh, that's looking really good and i uh, i just want to pass it along so whoever uh, is using it if they felt hesitant um you know i am at the edge so i'm reporting things that i do find uh, but it is uh, and I actually had an issue with it wasn't registering, so now it is registering um, OCXs. Um, so just a little update for those uh, that may be using it and interested, and need a little confidence boost that it's uh, it's doing a good job so far. So, but he's not finally released it in a gold fashion yet. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. I I'll probably because we are 
going to be building the hopefully building the uh, installers imminently for the the next version. I'll probably hold off using that. I don't want to. <laughs> there's been, in, been more than enough setbacks in doing this build, so I don't want right. to introduce something else uh, which could upset the uh, this build. So I'll probably keep with the version that I'm on. But then I'll look at switching to it as well, just to yeah. uh, take a look. Yeah, look at I, all. It's brilliant. Yeah, because I know in June um, there is some. And I'm, I don't have any reference to it, but some uh, requirement to have deployment packages uh, do some new things. And that's why Frederick has come out with this new release. So um, something's happening in June. Um, I just want to be ahead of it. I read something of it, but don't know what. But he's implementing what the new requirements are for packages and installations and registering, and especially for uh, Windows 11. And server 2022. So um, okay, just another great. Another thing to look at, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just just uh, yeah, just a heads up. Uh, um, cool. Thanks a lot. So, um, and I, mean, I think it's uh, Amen, isn't it? Um, I think so yeah. Yeah, I was just asking about the the example that just did there, and you mentioned about are we are we creating. Um, Wrapping it in a in a transaction, and we of course we could have done that, so we could have just rolled back uh, the, uh, the the transaction. That would have been a, uh, another way of doing it. But in that scenario, no, no, we're not doing. Uh, if it was something which we would have upset, let's say uh, you're doing an invoice run, okay, so you know that if it's going to change, uh, maybe some overall uh, uh, management header values, that kind of thing, so on and so forth, and. It's got to take the values from here and it's got to go and change invoice lines or, or, or whatever, or generate invoices. Then, you know, that for me mentally is a use case scenario of transactional processing. But just a simple update uh, for a, a parent child for that kind of, you know, product, then, I, yeah, I don't, didn't particularly need it, to be honest with you. So I, I didn't, didn't wrap that in a transaction. Need to fix all the need to fix the theme color. Uh, so that was not in. Uh, so that was not. That was that was also. He's saying that's that's not our eye. We for that. Um, let's show you what how we did that. No, nope, that's um, that's our Dev Extreme uh, Dev Extreme mapper, uh, which is coming along nicely. Uh, but no, that um, that dictionary. So we went to the product, weren't it? If we take a look at the RI on the uh, products, um, it has a one to many to sale options on the um, ID. Uh, and basically, why is that so tall up there? Uh, we have on updates, none, because we never change a grid. So you don't need. I know um, in the Friday webinar, I said we, we could have set that to none because record IDs and GUIs, you just don't ever change. It's been, they're there for linkage nine times out of 10. Uh, so you wouldn't you wouldn't really go and change them because you break your linkage in your system uh, and so on. So I don't never see a use case scenario for changing those realistically. Uh, so on update, I've set it to none. So I don't want it to even generate the code because it's going to put some overhead uh, on that. But on delete, we have the cascade. Um, but only for these options. Obviously, if it was linked to transactions, that wouldn't be cascade. That would be restricted because now I've got pertinent data related, which I can't afford to delete. But things like sale options, uh, product versions, Oh, product version is actually restricted, but that's because that feeds into other parts of the system. So there's a, there's an example of start, start, uh, just sale options and product versions. I should imagine serials would also be restricted, and they are because serials go off as well. They're allocated to uh, users. So it's not RI. It's not a transaction from a SQL transaction or that kind of prepping, but RI is just dictionary RI. That explain it, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna mark them off. Then we can mark them off. He says sure. yes. Cool. And yeah. we've got a thumbs up. Excellent. We'll have thumbs up. 
<laughs> so, um, Oliver was going well on the Dev Extreme update earlier. Um, he's still side of us now, um, but that is now uh, outputting the JS files and so on and so forth, all from the um, all from basically there. We're getting it so we can actually uh, apply, and you, there's no embed code, no anything. It's just add the extension and hit to recompile. You'll like that, won't you, John? I'm sorry, Andy. I was reading a question. Was so, there another question? I don't see a question. Well, it's in the chat. It wasn't it? Oh, sorry. It's like it disappeared. It disappeared. John, how did you arrive? No, no, no. We did that one. Oh. Yeah. Rodney just posted it in the QA. Okay. Sorry. What were you oh, saying, yes. Andy? Oh no, it was um it was just a, a progress update on uh, the dev extreme because we've gone a little quiet on its on its thing. But yeah, no, ah. it's um it's um at the global level. At the global level, you will see software setting. Oh, some of this has now changed, John. You can see it forces things for you. Uh, and it's dev extreme in use. And we've now got settings at global level to say, okay, I want to allow me inserts by default. Um, what Basically, you set them once. That's the idea. And then at the local level, this is Bruce, one of Bruce's. Um, Got some embed, but the embed, I can assure you, is just debug. It's not needed. Um, but yes, you just add the extension. And basically, by default, it will say to use the globals. Um, and you can override at a local level. But when you hit compile, what that will do is through the power of magic, and I can't find the folder, it will automatically populate a subfolder for you called Dev Extreme. That brings in the actual Dev Extreme libraries and then it writes out uh, your JavaScript for each procedure that you've added it to. So that has its own dedicated JavaScript. Nice. And that's what it's created for you. And it takes all these settings, of course, off, um, off what's just been uh, compiled. You know, this is, I haven't done JavaScript yet, but I was, I don't know anything about PHP, but um, I needed to do something. So I had ChatGPT write the code for me and it <laughs> it was good code. I mean, it's interesting because it's, I still don't know much about PHP, but I know more than I did before. I and, have, uh, I have Chat yeah. Oliver. <laughs> chat Oliver. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's always a good thing. But anyway, as we get more to the JavaScript stuff, I'll, that's, I'm sure I'll be relying on ChatGPT to teach me some of that too. Do you know there's an, a really good course on Udemy? Um, I don't know if anyone ever uses ah. them for any of their stuff, but um, they've always got offers on and always got deals on. Uh, but there's a really good JavaScript course on there. Um, quite long, but um, takes you from zero to, I don't know, it's called zero to hero, but, you know, it's good. So, question. Yes, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney has a question. We can open his mic. Uh, I don't know how helpful we will be, but there are people who use Sequin, I think. So, let's see. We use Sequin 7. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, I'm not just saying I can answer it. I'm just saying we use it. Oh, here we go. Okay, Rodney, I opened your microphone. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? We yes. Can. Awesome. Um, yeah, good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm fairly new to Sequin um, 7. Um, I've been using um, Sequin 6 all along, and I have gone through the Kepsoft um, documentation as to how to um, um, go about adding Sequin 7 to your application. So I've been um, been using Sequin 6 on um, pointing the um, the the database and all the operator file stuff to my um, SQL database. And um, where I have gotten to the text file that you import into your DCT, and then you make those changes, um, like for example, your owner name and your um, is it the full name of the, um, the DBO dot sequence security, for example. 
um, so that I said that I ported um, the, the procedures from the template into my application. So when I run my app, um, and I, first of all, I have to create a policy. That's my understanding. So I have, when, when, when I create my policy, um, I get an error. I'll give you the error message. It has to do with, it says, um, an error was experienced when making changes to the uh, dbo.sequent setting file. Now, I've gone through the video that Bruce, um, that when Bruce did the demo um, on YouTube. Um, apparently on the documentation also states that I need to do some conversion to the blob fields and then change those to varchar. So I'm not sure how to go about that because I think maybe that might be my problem. Oh, is this converting from a C6 to uh, C6, uh, sequin six to sequin seven? Yes. Do you know, we use seven, but uh, we we did use six, but for the particular scenario when we uh, we had to upgrade, we, we we didn't have to actually do that. We we had the luxury of being able to restart their 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 security on that particular uh, on that particular. Uh, uh, project, so I probably wouldn't feel comfortable. I mean, we could totally figure out how to change a how to change a variable and that kind of thing, but um, I think for the right answer, we really need Bruce on that one. If truth be oh. told, okay, awesome. Thanks for trying. Mm. I mean, your connection string. We put our connection. Well, that that's, that is what's came come, come in. So yours are over. In, you're yours are actually in SQL. So have you got your, yes. your connection string in a variable? Yes, correct. And, oh, the, Bruce is and, the, and the, by the time it's opening, is um, is that variable uh, primed up uh, with the correct um, uh, values to be able to connect to it? Correct. I am connecting. Yeah. That's good. Well, the maestro himself is here then, so he can take over it. <laughs> okay, awesome. What's the question? Right, um, everyone. I've, I've just run. Hi, Bruce. Just in time. Just in time. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, I'm struggling a bit with the sequence seven. Um, so I've added, I've gone through your, your documentation on the Kibs of site. Um, fast forward as I have added the, um, uh, the all the procedures on my app and um, all the um, instructions also on the DCT. Um, also changed um, the, um, um, for, for example, that uh, DSSW7 um, and for the file name and instead added uh, the DBO dot, um, for example, um, sequin user. Okay. Um, yeah. I, that's all good. What, what What's the problem? What's not working? Right. So I can, okay, so when I run my, my application for the first time, so I'll need to add my policies. And when I when when I click the OK button, I get some errors. Oh, excellent! What errors? Um, it says, uh, just give me one sec. It's, it's, okay. can, should we share your screen? Yes. Hang on, I'll make you a panelist, and then you can share your screen. So, so should I click the join panelist? Join as panelist, yeah. Yes. It's going to mute your microphone, so you'll have to unmute yourself again. Hi, right, guys. There you okay. go. Then you okay. click on the, the, the green button at the bottom, share screen, and then share. I don't see share screen. I see start a video, and then I've got more options. Let's see. Share screen, yes. I want to share. Sharing is caring. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go application share. You'll shout once you can see my screen. I can see a screen, yes. Uh, one oh. second. An error. Okay, so that's not one of my errors. So it looks like a SQL error. It looks like oh. some sort of 
I don't know. Access if, violation was experienced making okay. Access violation was experienced making changes to DBO sec, sequence settings. This would suggest to me that your application doesn't have rights to that table. Something along those lines. Oh, okay. That looks that looks like a SQL error, John. Doesn't it look like a SQL error? No, we could always ask Chat GPT what the error is. <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know if it's SQL because it's mentioning CLA MSS DLL on a SQL one. And, and CLA, so right, but that. That, that looks like a stack trace of some kind. I think that's still from the client side. But anyway, However, it's, it's still permissions granted, but I think that's yeah. coming from the client side. It's, it says access violation, which suggests, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a file driver error. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, well, um, if you run debug view, did debug view say anything? Um, I didn't run my debug viewer. Maybe that would be an okay. option to explore that's as well. Oh, that's always a good option when you get errors from our stuff. Cause I often hide information in the debug view output. Because okay. I'm, ca I'm I'm cutting that way. So let's run that and 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 do it again and let's see what happens. All right, cool. I don't know if I should just share the entire screen. That's always but, a good idea. Then we can see everything. Yeah. Stop sharing. Uh, the share. other good diagnostic technique is always to make sure the example app is working, because that will mean that you've got all your dependencies. Do you have NetTalk in this program? Yes. Okay. Which NetTalk? 12. Okay. So that's all good. It'll use the NetTalk encryption then. If you run openssl.exe in the folder, what do you see? Uh, just repeat that. In your program folder, mm -hmm. there's a program called openssl.exe. Just double click on that and let's see what it does. Uh, let's see. There we go. What's second from the bottom. Second, second from the bottom. Uh, this one. Open. C yeah. Okay. Yeah. Double click that. Okay. That's excellent. So what that prompt means is that you've got all your DLLs installed. You've got your C runtime installed. There's no problems with any of that. That's a, that's just a good test. So that's all good. So open debug view plus <gasps> plus. You've got all debug view. Oh, that's terrible. You should have debug view plus plus, but all debug view. Yeah, you, no, know. you should have ultimate debug. No, no, I, I disagree <laughs> uh, there, I just, I just, but we can have that discussion later. We got to bring up. We can. The, we only got two but we, today. But we will, we will yeah. agree, John, that not the old debug view. We'll I agree think, with I that. Think we'll agree with that. Okay. Yeah. But bring it up for now because it's all you've got and you, it makes you like a, a second class citizen, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I mean, I've done a change. Good. I'd just like to, I've done something here, um, which I think might be just incorrect. Um, I'll remove yeah. that. No, you need you need a program secret. Oh, okay, okay, but that's on the my table. Um, oh, I see. Uh, that won't apply. To, okay, it won't apply to to second. So you can just ignore that. It won't be in. It won't be in okay. scope. Let's just check, double check. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna build. Because where I got confused was when. Um, you mentioned something about blobs and SQL, um, which wasn't... Um, Using MS SQL, huh? Yes. So I don't know that there was too much to say about MS SQL. I think it comes out as a VARCH. Uh, yeah, let me look up what I said. VARCH VARCH Max. VARCH Max, yeah. And then you took it not binary in the dictionary or something like that. Okay, can we just at least also double check that? Just, my... just run the program and let's see what it says in DBV. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Can I continue with my policies? Yeah. Okay. Just do that for now. And can I click the UK button? Yeah, do that. 
You can see uh, Debug View. Debug View. Okay, I, I, I don't think it's intrinsically a sequent issue. And again, I'm going back to that error because that's not a sequent error. That's a, that's something else. Either Claren or the the file driver reporting through Claren. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, it suggests it suggests that you're not able to write to that table. Um, what if you go to one of the other tables? So just did you put all the other tables in your database as well? Yes. So go um, go right to another table. Let's see what you got there. Uh, that's good tenants. Surprisingly, oh, that'll be, it's reading it. Okay, so add one or change it. Mm -hmm. no, it's just just change it. Change it. Oh, your screens. Boom, boom. Okay, that, that long delay suggests that it's yeah. trying to talk to the database. Okay. And that is database error. Maybe one of the SQL guys could give you some clues as to how you might diagnose that. Okay. What well, I no, could open connection. Oh, I say you could open up SQL Management Studio and use are you using Windows authentication or SQL authentication? SQL authentication. So go to Management Studio and log in with the same credentials as a query and um oh and test that out oh, okay see make sure you can select from the table and if there's a field that you can update through management studio using the same credentials that the program is using that will tell you if you've got a sql rights problem okay okay all right cool Thank you so much, guys. I will definitely give that a shot because my assumption was probably I'm doing something wrong on the um, sequence level, which I've missed. But so let's just go look in in your in your SQL Manager. Um, let's go see the the declaration of your table. In the DCT. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Here, here in um, in in SQL Manager. Manager um, Studio, yeah. Uh, so, so your your attributes thing there, attributes, attributes license settings. That's all Varchar Max, uh, and that's good. It should not need to be on there. Okay, let's go check your dictionary. Okay. So we've got the one. Go to go to sequence settings because that's the table we're we're looking at. And go to um, open up for the settings field there. Settings third, from the field. third, third bottom column. Yeah, yeah. They're not they're not marked as binary. So well, the docs just say don't mark them as binary here, and have them as virtual max in the SQL database. So that seems fine. Okay. So okay. so I'm still leaning towards some sort of um, access control issue. SQL table um, rates. So that error looked like an exception in SQL, you guys. I would look at go into your management studio and go to the, open that up over on the left on the object explorer. And just open up, yeah. And go down to management and open up SQL server logs. And then just double click on that top one. Let's see what it says in there. So, do we login, have login any? failed password? What's this? Scroll. What time Scroll down there? a little bit. Why don't you cause, let's cause the error again and then refresh this. Say the uh, listing there is in descending date order, so the most recent error is. Yeah, but I want to make sure that because he's been doing some other stuff too. Let's let's cause the error, and then we know for sure. Okay, so let's go back now. Hit a refresh. Is a refresh. Yeah. Go. Go to the top. So did we actually get anything new? I think mm -hmm. that was the same message That's that was there. Yeah. All right, so that was worth a shot. Yeah. But sure, thank you, guys. What's the, what's the next one down there, just for chuckles? Um, Let's scroll down to the text down below. Is there anything? 
down in the, the little gray area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, sorry. I was hoping there'd be something useful there. Yeah. Does it feel like a SQL RG, Rick? It feels like an exception. Like, that's why I thought there might be something in here is that SQL itself was having an error, you know, in returning that. Yeah. Well, um, that's referring to, C, uh, to CLA run and CLA MS. I, I think it's local, but I, I think it's not even got the connection in the first place. Well, we're obviously that's why you're connecting because we're, we're reading from the server without any problem. I mean, so yeah. we're pulling the policies up, pulling the settings up. So we're absolutely reading. We're connected to the database successfully oh, and reading from it. <laughs> it's just trying to write to it that it's failing. So it the, could be for a the table user, grant problem. I was going to say for the user that you've got, uh, you're connecting on. Can we have a look at their permissions? You say you're using SQL authentication. Yeah. So are you, Rodney, are you like an admin on this system? Yes, I am an admin. Um, um, yeah, so I've added a, a dummy. I've also added like a, a dummy table here called client, and I can read and write to it. Um, so, okay. So it's specific to the second settings the stuff. Yeah. I mean, the second settings table is just a table. That's, right. That's part of the magic. There's no. There's no hidden secrets there's stuff inside the fields of course but um but the fields themselves are just fields which builder clarin are you using here c11.1 let's see yeah. 13, 8, 1, 5. Yeah. It's very up to date yeah is it too up to date well i haven't seen any issues with this is the one i i use for my tests and stuff although i don't do a whole lot with ms sql um but I certainly, I mean, I would have, I presume we would have heard something by now. Randy, go uh, and go up to the properties on your table there, here in the dictionary. Let's just yeah. take a look at everything again here. The top, yeah, the properties, the very top line. Oh. There you go. Not a whole lot going on there. No. No, and the field types are all very straightforward types by design. Right. And this is the import, right? I mean, you imported this from yeah. this is the TXA, right? Correct. Why don't you go to, hmm. Why don't you do this? Go to Management Studio again. Let's do a quick. And go up to Tools. Tools. Up in the menu, up in the top in the menu. Ah, okay. And go go profiler, first one. Uh, profiler. And go ahead and say connect. And in the use the template right in the center there, uh, there's a drop list. It says standard right now. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, pick the next one down, T-SQL. Okay. Okay, go ahead and do a run. Okay, now let's go back to the app and cause the error again. Okay. All right, let's go to Profiler. Uh, it's the icon all the way to your right now. The yeah. rightmost one in your taskbar. Wait, oh, sorry. There you go. All right, so let's scroll. So... Um, so you'll go up, um, so there's a declare statement kind of like right in the middle of your screen right there. It says declare at P1. So up, 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 up a little more right there. Down okay. one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So there's where we're selecting the data from. So that's where we read the data for the update form. And then go down to these bottom two. So we're trying to start a transaction. Um, so basically it did, uh, so if you go up one, click on the next one up there. Okay. You can see here it started. This is where it started a log out, started a transaction. And the next one down is where it basically killed the transaction. Um, but it never sent, never even sent an update message to the backend. 
So I'm with Andy now for sure. This is something on the client side, something on the clarion side that's failing. Um, Cause we never, we never sent the message back to SQL to actually do the update. So I know we're not helping you a lot, but. <laughs> yeah, no. And the um, Rodney, on the on the dictionary, that, that client table, I take it that's using the same owner string. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just just checking. Um, the, on the on the um, chat, uh, Chris Reynolds is saying you could disable the firewall just to test, but I, I'm not sure how that would. I don't come yeah. into play. Try, but I don't think that's it because we're connected to the database. Yeah, mm. and we see it's starting the transaction. Firewall is killing transaction. it. You know, the Windows firewall isn't going to distinguish between reads and updates. You know, I mean, it's just going to let you connect or not connect. Yeah. So, and we're definitely connected. And off the top of my head, I believe that form is a form. I know it looks like a form, um, but I believe it actually is a form. Just go to go back to your app, go to the extensions for that procedure. No, no, not global oh, extensions. Procedure on, on, uh, up, up, update settings. No, no, update settings. Update settings. So it's sec, sequin update settings. It's in the middle there. No. Yeah, that's the policies. Go to, go to extensions. Okay. Yeah, updates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it is an actual current form. It's, it's, it, one of them is not. That's why the only reason I asked. One of them is, is a simple window. But this one is a form. Um, Remember, he's getting error on the sequence settings table even when he's updating a tenant. So because obviously when you're updating uh, a tenant. Uh, no, no, no. No, tenant, tenant is the sequence settings. Same, same thing. So we, oh, we talk about... Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so the table is sequence settings um, because usually it's just the settings for one. There's one tenant. Right, right, right. But in fact, yeah. if, you, if you have multiple settings, then that translates to multiple tenants. In, in Rodney, can you do an update like on the user table in the application? If you do an update on your user, just change anything? You can't because you can't update users until you've set your policies. Yes, so I'll just great. say, uh, this, 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 no. So let's just see that client. I know you've got some records in there. Let's chuck, add an extra record on your dummy so we can just see it. And that profile is still running into it. So yeah, we should have yeah. activity uh, on there as well. If we can just take a quick look. Chris uh, says another, SQL. another thing that's messed him up a few times when the structure of the SQL in the dictionary does not match. That's fair enough, Chris, but it's not writing the update. So it doesn't particularly know or care the SQL structure. Um, Although Clarion does download the structure and then, you know. Yeah, but you get in the browsers working. So. Right. No, that's a good point. Uh, I'm trying to think how you would not be able to write. It's almost as if you've opened the table in read-only mode. Um, although then I would have expected a slightly different error. But let's go to your app. Hey, I mean, let's 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 wave the chickens. Go to global uh, properties, uh, actions, file control. File open mode is share. Um, Turn off the enclose RI code. Yeah, turn that off. Turn that That's off. That's good. Kill the transactions. Um, I mean, like if that file open mode was forced to read only, then, you know, you could get an error. But why? Yeah, <laughs> but that seems very unlikely. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm trying yeah, to figure no, out no. How, how you get the error. Um, yeah, go, go ahead, compile and run it. Let's see what happens. Are we sure all the DLLs are from the to, same Clarion version? That type to of be fair, if the transaction open failed, then you would get an error. And not it, it it would then bomb out, as as we're seeing. And you wouldn't see a transaction around a browser. So that's not a good that's not a bad thing to to click on. Um If, if, your, if your user didn't have transaction rights, uh, you, you probably don't need to check those boxes, but knock yourself out. I'm intrigued it took so long to get an error. The first yeah. time. Yeah. 
well. That's, that's why it feels like a... I guess the next thing to do is to turn on trace.exe and, and actually um, trace out the Clarence stuff as well. See if there's any clues there. Can we yeah. look at the SQL profile for the um, that client? We should see the activity. Just make sure they... Yeah, go to the profiler. Uh, on the, on the right. That guy there. Yeah. Go right so, to the... To the bottom or to the top? Bottom. Uh, oh. Uh, no, so this is this is the error we just ran platform. into. If yeah. you're looking for the update, yeah, it'll be up scroll higher. Up. Scroll yeah. up. Scroll up. Yeah, because we're looking for the one where we did the client. We put an extra record in. Oh. Oops. Did I scroll too fast? Or? Oh, 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 hang on, hang on. Oh, okay, that's just setting a setting. Does it continue scrolling up? No, I've, I'll, I'll come back down again. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, jump to the bottom and um, look for a chance. Up. What must I look for? Actually, it's probably just easier to do a search for insert into. Insert. Can I do a search? See. Try find previous. So there's your insert on your client, Andy. Hey, client, yeah. And I forget what he typed in now, but. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's like everything's normal unless it's the second yeah, setting staple, <laughs> which <laughs> is odd. Yeah. And the security on that particular user, could, uh, what you're adding, uh, what, and you know, there's no difference. You've not set the sequin tables to any kind of different um and there's still user tables, aren't they? So it doesn't, uh, they'll be one they're of just the tables. Yeah, they're yeah. just tables. Okay, I think your next test, Rodney, yeah. is, is you can literally just wizard up a browse and form mm -hmm. on basically that table, but perhaps one of the other sequent tables as well. There's a suggestion Sorry. to take the, the query out of Profiler and run it in Management Studio, see what it does. But we're not even Although getting the, the even insert getting there. statement. Yeah, that's right. it's, so it's an earlier yeah. query. Or the right. update statement for sec when setting table isn't even getting to Profiler. It's not even coming yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, so there's, yeah, okay. So, 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 so I think, it. yeah, I think the next step I would do here is is suggest, Rodney, is make, just wizard up a browse and a form. Those are the tables on your dictionary, so you can just wizard on them. Just to mm -hmm. check that... Um, it's it's not sequent code because obviously if this if you just do a wizard there will be no sequent code in it. it you won't, can I call it policy or you can call it a or a one and a two. I don't care. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Policy. I think it first your idea about turning the local Clarion side trace on is a good idea as well. Yeah, it might give us clues. That might be a there might be a more relevant error. Take another table, take the user's table, just to start with. Okay. Do we run a form as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There is on the form. Okay. So should I hook it up on the menu? Yep. So access it. Okay, cool. Very good. Okay. Should I build or should we add another one? I'll just try this one um, first and see what we get. This one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's give it a shot. There's 
Should Shouldn't I there be a record in there? In, in insert? No, not the users table. Settings table, yes, but not these. Oh, sorry, user table. Do, I'm, I'm do, sorry. Do, do, do an insert. Uh, you will need to populate the, just put some gump in the GERD field. A, B, C, D or something like that. One, two, three, four, whatever you like. All the fields. Um, I just you just put some stuff in them. Yeah, just let's, you only have to do two or three fields. So I don't think it matters terribly. And say, okay. Okay, so that one, that table's fine. Okay, so we're going to do the exercise again, but this time with the sequence settings table. Okay. Well, sequin, is it the sequin? I'll call it So we've got this guy. Yeah, but add another one. Again, just put some stuff in. There should be a good somewhere that you should have to fill in. Uh, uh, you see the good field maybe said is do not populate. So, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Change, change the record that's already there. Okay. You could you could press OK, but you'll be able to add one, but probably not two. It is there. Change, change the one that's there. You can delete it. Yes. Let's do that first. Yes. I just right. change def no change default record to naught. Or yeah, anything. Yeah, no, I just try not to break the. Okay. Should I go OK? Okay. I think we're leaning towards so, something in sequin. It's leaning towards something in sequin, although sequin shouldn't be. Could be, be something like with the secrets or something like that. That might be. No, those are all in, inside a field. They're, no, but I mean, all... they're used to generate what the. Yeah, but maybe what's in the field is so wrong. You know, you know I mean, that the driver's just falling apart on it. I'm, I'm obviously just guessing here, but. It's. Yeah. I, I, mm. Um, it's base, yeah. It, I mean, t obviously something, Rick. Okay, Rodney, what's going to happen is is you need to, to catch up with me on Friday afternoon. Okay. Um, cool. e email me or Skype me, and I'll I'll team view in and and run some tests and 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 dive into the code. It's a little weird. I do not know what. I would also uh, maybe in the meantime run the local record. Clarion DP trace, you know, and take a peek at that and just see if. It's given you any more details on the error and also show you the record buffer it's trying to write out when it gets the error. And maybe there's a clue in there. Maybe. Yeah. 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 No, sure. Thank you so much, guys. I'll pop you an email, Bruce. Cool. Thanks. I'll be curious to know the answer. I think the record, I think the record book yeah. is a good call. A rogue yeah. single quote, something like that. I mean, Clarion allows single quotes in fields. Oh, agree. Agree, agree, granted. I think it's going to be content driven. And one leans in that direction, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I will. I will. I will. We can ask again next week. I will we'll report back what we found because. 
the second in the, in that particular procedure, second is not actually doing any file access that I'm aware of off the top of my head. It's record. It's strictly manipulating the record. Right. Well, but it uh, does have blobs. This table does have blobs in it, and obviously the blobs are not on the form here. So we are manipulating the blobs. Uh, maybe it's blob related. It's I mean, yeah. I mean, you're doing the, all the before update logic that does the yeah, you know, creates yeah. the hashes and and all of that. So it's got to be something in all of that. Seems like. Well, the hashes and that they're just strings. I guess if there was a thing the driver would complain about, it would be the blobs. Right. And but I. Yeah, look, blobs are notorious and clarin for being. Is your my table up to date, Rodney? Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be one thing to double check is that your, you know, all your What's the my table version? and your sequin, especially, are all. I you know, you know. Yeah, I mean, it should complain as well if it isn't. Well, but if it was just back a little bit, maybe there, you know, I'm just reaching for something here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm with you. Uh, no, my table's at 123. You're on 118. So that to be worth updating. Okay, uh, your cool. sequence on 720, and sequence is currently on later than that. Yeah, the sequence on 747. Yeah, okay. That That's a good call, um, Rick. I, I, so update your my table yes. and your sequence and your net talk for that matter. Hey, you know what? Theory. While you're here, do your string theory, do your J file, <laughs> get, get everything updated. Okay, cool. When you when you sing weird stuff, go on. Well, know, especially you, the my table and sequin there for a while. Upgrade the report. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Grab grab oh, cool. updates of everything and then uh, send me mail. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank we're, you. We're on, we're Thank we're you. allegedly on holiday tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. I might be online. Yeah. Okay. I'll be working also based in South Africa, so. So definitely uh, on holiday then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there a net okay. talk tomorrow? Or there is, John. Travel? There is okay. because because I'm I'm that kind of guy. I, I'm not I'm not an Andy who says oh, it's a holiday. Uh -huh. We oh, already have this earlier. <laughs> my, yeah, my we already have this earlier. It's it's not oh it's my wedding anniversary I can't do a webinar I mean I'm not one of those guys <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing the webinar on Monday and it's a holiday so yes Monday's a holiday covered. here as well yeah. already covered guys can I stop sharing and update you can you okay awesome that's a okay. good good thing to do so all right thanks Rodney I'm actually going to grab the screen I've got a quick question here. while we've got all the gurus here. Good. This one for you, Rick. <laughs> it's more of a template one, but it could be for anybody, uh, to be fair. So we've got, what's, what's the recommended practice to get template settings shared between apps? <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got our template helper class. That's brilliant. But I need it at template level so when you hit compile it's for the dev extreme wrapper and it's got to kick out the js uh code which we can't do at runtime because it's needed before you fire up the web server of course so it's got to be a compile time and i want global settings at uh, for you know for a multi-dll solution i want multi i want uh, global settings which go on the template helper but i need them to get across uh, to the other apps um, of course, I can write them out and read them in, but I think that's really probably your only chance. I'd have it at the data DLL and have it write it out, and then mm -hmm. you can have the template on the non data DLL apps read them in. I do yeah, that like with the, ver with the version resource. So the yeah. version resource of the data DLL generates a file that all the other ones suck in to use. I I'm yeah. not sure what else you can do. No, well, can, um, you could go that way. The, the Andy, what? What I've done in network up to now um, is basically make almost every global setting is a property in the class. So you'll see that the generator code doesn't typically use the, it uses the, the settings, and that's why most of the settings are in the web server procedure. I don't need them globally because the web server procedure sets the web server class. And then that gets, there's a group in there that gets cloned into each 
web handler. So the web handler knows what all the settings are. And because it knows what all the settings are, it can deal with those settings in both generated code. You you just put this, you know, it does case statements um, uh, but and things like that. At, you've got the settings at global level, but they can be overridden at procedure level. So if I've got a browse and I've taken one of your, I think it's uh, net, or net, net one or something like that, and it's a web server one, and it's the mailboxes and the form and so on. So basically you get a JS uh, gen generated per procedure with the settings, the override settings of each individual uh, procedure. So if you add, let's say you add uh, four browsers, you would end up with, with four uh, JavaScript files, one for each of the browsers. So those settings can be come from a global, but they are derived, but they, so they are overridable per uh, per procedure. So I can't put them in a class because uh, it's it's that I've got to write it to the JavaScript and then that goes into XHTML uh, and gets linked in. Yeah, you're using a slightly different methodology there. Um, so, so the methodology, I can only tell you what network does, and then you can kind of work from there. But so in the in network, all the widgets have settings, um, but we're following the the jQuery pattern. So all of those settings can be set when the widget is created. The widget is created at runtime, not at compile time. Um, in other words, the HTML page is generated, as you know, at, at runtime, and and the widgets get populated onto the page there with the values that are in the program at that point. So, so that the which I would have in the the, the template held by the global class derived down to us. So I've got access to a class there with all the settings on both global and local. So I've got that. Yes. Um, so, that, so, so then you translate those settings into the JavaScript that you're using to prime your widgets. Because I found that generating, pre-generating HTML, pre-generating JavaScript. Now, obviously, we've got these JavaScript libraries right there in the scripts folder, but the 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 web app uses those libraries and everything in those libraries has the ability to take in essentially mountains of parameters they're settings they're done as a as a as a an options um but, but a bit of json um and they they pass through to the object when it's created but uh, but that is the jquery pattern i don't know if you're using the same kind of pattern whether you would do well it yeah right like that, that. It is, and our settings, the, the local, let's say, mailboxes, the uh, mailbox browse, uh, JS, yep. Um, yeah. That is uh, basically a JSON structure of the settings for that data grid. So do you want so, insert, do you want to use so icons? Instead of, instead of generating a, a JavaScript file per browse, I, I would lean towards putting generic code in one script file and then putting the dynamic bits of the code into the generated HTML as a script tag for that page or for that procedure, whatever it needs to be. So, so I'd, I, I skewed away from generating static files of any description per procedure. We, do, we don't generate those. Um, okay. If there's, it, for each procedure, it generates what it needs to do and it regenerates it. And as much as possible, I mean, literally as much as possible code is moved down into the into the the widget itself so the browse widget obviously has got all the browse code and that's just in the scripts folder as the browse widget and every every browse procedure is really just setting options for that okay. widget and 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 in some cases calling methods on that widget which you're allowed to do essentially exactly the same approach the 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 the, the extreme grid is is that it's, it's just a widget as you said um takes its parameters but currently then parameters are being read uh, from uh, a generated uh, js file so yeah so that's that's probably what i would lean away from don't yeah. don't pre-generate the js file at all rather um let it generate the javascript into the page yep. when you generate the page or um, if the if the widget is going to make a call back to the server, then generate it at that point, and because that that frees you up, you can then generate that based on essentially 
um, properties in the handler class, which are inherited from properties in the server class. Mm -hmm. And that means that you can do all kinds of interesting things. Like let's take the theme, for example, right? You can set the theme in the program. It's a setting, but you can actually change that particular value at runtime. And so three people can be on the site and actually be looking at it in three different themes. And the site doesn't actually know. Well, I mean, it obviously knows, but the site, the, the, the web server doesn't really care. It's just taking a, a session value and throwing it back and you know, whatever's in there is in there. Um, but there's no, we don't say, oh, okay, it's it's this, you know, we're using this theme for the site. We'll pre-generate the HTML or anything like that. Um, and there were a number of reasons I went down that road. Um, the one is just flexibility, as, as you, you're kind of seeing here, especially when it comes to multi-DLL and you've got to deal with those settings. Um, the other is that you just, you don't have this problem of having a million little stubby text files floating which around. Which the are, the, yeah. Yeah, which, which may or may not be current. You may or not be able to delete them. It's like one of those things that'll grow forever and never be able to extend. And I didn't really like that. So... Um, no, and actually, I've, it's I've, I've slightly like slower. Okay. It's slightly slower to do, to do it off the disk as well. So, we've, yeah, uh, I would see if you can make it use the same pattern as being used. I, th I could see a place where we, we would need to have some sort of mechanism for you to get global settings. In other words, settings in the web server object into the web handler objects. as Because at the moment I'm doing that, it, there's a giant group structure that just gets cloned um, you know, from one object to the other. It just clones them over. But I could, but that's obviously I'm in control of that because I'm in control of the ink file. If um, if you want needed more settings, which you would, then um, I will. You let's, no, I'll, I'll have a chat with him tomorrow um, because it's. I was saying earlier, it's, it's it's except for we need one embed off you for the data grid. We are kind of there. I'm not saying we've yeah. got all the settings. <laughs> By no means we've got all the settings. No, no, but sure. We've got all for, for, for the obvious ones. And then we will tackle them on a per case basis after that. Yeah. Um, I thought that was the best approach. But, um, yeah, it just came to, like, parameterizing a lot of the, the settings. Like, do you want to use icons or do you want to use the word insert and, oh, sorry, change and delete, that kind of thing? Um, yes. Do you want them to be sortable? So one browser, you might want things to be sortable. Another one, you definitely don't want. Yeah, and, and you'll see that, that you'll see the thing. same pattern because it's exactly the same patterns we have. So we have all these settings at the web server level, which effectively act as global settings. Yep. Um, and then you have, you can override all of those things at the local procedure level. Um, and in code, it, it kind of just sets the local property to either the global property or whatever you set it to, basically. Yeah, and we've, and we've that, got that mechanism already invented yeah. and, and, and used elsewhere. So, and I did think about going down that, but of course I was still thinking external filing. You can't have that, you can't have it being created at runtime rather than compile time, because I was thinking, that wouldn't, wouldn't really work. It's not practical, it's, it's just won't work. No. Um, but of course, if we can skip the file completely, uh, then that's kind of the obvious choice. So yeah, yeah we will we'll have a look at that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Oh, you well, may, you may, need, you may need, <laughs> I'm just off the top of my head, you may need a hook for that. So uh, feel free to, yeah. You'll, you'll see the mechanism now that you know what it is. You'll see it in play. That's It's mm -hmm. the site's queue, which becomes the site group. Um, and, and and you'll see the one, the, 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 it's a queue in the server, which becomes a group in the in the handler. And we may need to, to have a mechanism for you to be able to put your own values in, you know, so that it gets done under the hood for you. But but that that we can deal with, that we can we can definitely add. Cool. I'll have, I will have a chat and uh, report back accordingly. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay. We're about to wrap up. I just wanted to bring up CIDC just for a brief second here. 14 days, Bruce. <laughs> 14 days. Seriously. In a few hours. <laughs> I'm, <weird. laughs> I'm not sure this is correct. I'll have to relook at this. It seems like... That seems very. Um, that, what date are we planning on May? Seems like it's fourteen days and twenty two and a half hours or so. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll check this. Look, maybe it's it's figuring out East Coast time or something. Anyway, no, that's right. Yeah. It's fourteen days. 
for sure. All right. Two weeks and a day from two Two weeks tomorrow, give or take. Yep. Excellent. Are you, are you up to my standard yet, Andy? No, nope. uh, but we have got um, time put aside on Friday to discuss it all, which means you will get your schedule on Friday, John. Emailed across to you. Well, messaged. Sure, I believe him. I believe him, John. What do you, what do you no, believe? No, him? He can. Wengel's on a, another ah, project we'll for sure. uh, four, we, four days a week. I, mean, so. I think I Mark's mean, ask. Mark's oh, asking um, Andy when you're shipping version seven. It's on version calendar seven, you? six calendar. Well, we already update. covered that know. today. You see, if you were here on time, <laughs> you would have had all this information. What's your back, Ruth? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Yeah, good, John. Two weeks to go. Here we start doing some training. Yep, yep. Very interested. Very interested in uh, seeing how all that happens. We'll we'll be sending out emails and such, and we're going to have a, a, a CIDC meeting right after this webinar. Yay! With these guys. <laughs> you know, Wendy's making me try and get fit and lose some weight. So I've got to go to the gym That's after right. a webinar on a that Monday way. and on that a way. Wednesday. So keeping me late doesn't really he's got doesn't to help go, me motivate me. He's got to go to the gym <laughs> for as long as the webinar lasts, John. That's that's no, what we're No way. <laughs> so on a Monday, he's there till like midnight. <laughs> and that's why he's always trying to keep us short on a Wednesday. Okay. Well, let's let's get the thing done. Uh, what's happening tomorrow then, uh, Bruce? Tomorrow, network, yes. Network webinar. It's our, All right. it's our first one in two weeks. And what's happening Friday is duck, duck, duck day. Yes, as far as, as, as cash ducking thing, you know, so yeah. co-pilot. I think there's co-pilot. a co-pilot in there now. It's the co-pilot yeah. edition, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised not. I'm edition. surprised it's not GPT Dex. I would have gone with GPT Dex mm. myself. Yeah. Marketing, good marketing there, Bruce. Yeah, you know. All right. Yeah, I mean, Okay, with that, uh, we'll see everybody later. Thanks all for showing up. And we went way longer than I originally thought we would. We started out with zero questions and ended up where we are. Now. There we so, go. All right. Yeah. See you all tomorrow and, and or Friday. And Cheers, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. 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 First wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave.